very wary of men who try to teach you things. Most of them don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so I want to give, I'm going to give a personal example of this in a minute. The reason why this is important is because realizing that men in general are full of crap and don't know what they're talking about and the more confident they are in what they're talking about, usually the more they don't know what they're talking about. Like realizing that changed my life. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that I can't learn anything from men. I learn stuff from my husband all the time. I learn stuff from my guy friends all the time. I learn stuff from my mutuals on this app. The men that I think are actually doing the work rather than, um, you know, just to make a ton of money off of engagement from women by literally taking women like me and a lot of my mutuals content and then just saying it. But as a man, women are like, oh my God, he's a good one. Don't buy it. Anyway, all of the men who have tried to teach me something with the exception of a couple, and I appreciate those couple were literally trying to fork me or something. They wanted something from me, money or um, my bambana, right? This is especially important for women who want to get into things that are kind of in the male dominated industry. These men are not your friends. The men are trying to teach you something are not your friend. So as a woman who was trying to get into climbing, it was mostly men climbing. Right? And I'm really good at being like, bro, bra, you know, of like not flirting and kind of sending all the body language like, I'm your sister, cool girl kind of person, not like ever a mm, schmegel interest. Pretty good at sending off that vibe, right? Or so I thought. And so I did have a lot of guys who actually taught me and they were thoughtful. And they were, you know, like they would, the way they taught was actually like uh, almost the way that the reason why I would teach people is that someone taught me. So I felt that I only owed it to teach other people, right? It's like, you know, kind of paying it forward, kind of mentoring. I, I always like to have someone that, that uh, mentors me. And I also like to mentor other people. I think it keeps you kind of in a humble but confident place, right? And so I did have a few men who did that. But older men, older men, and no, and especially in the climbing world, it's a bunch of, bunch of hobo sexuals who live in their vans uh and who have a bunch of girlfriends all over the country with, with their basically their you know a storage unit for them a lot of these men will teach you to climb so that you'll date them like this dude this loser i ended up dating all summer and i wasn't even attracted to him i literally went into the climbing shop one day and met the people at the, the, the gear shop and they were cool and so they were like, yeah, meet us out there. And I really learned how to lead climb. I learned a lot from these guys. I was you know, just kind of one of them. And then this guy was hanging around. And so he had all the time in the world for some reason. And so he took me climbing. He was like, yeah, I'll teach you to lead. I'll teach you to climb. So him and I were like, became climbing partners. And I'm not used to forking my climbing partners. So it literally never occurred to me that this, anything else would happen. This man was like 40 something. He lived in the attic of another man's house. He also lived in his vans part-time so he could go climb. He was bald, not funny, just, uh, uh. but anyway, you know, I was grateful that he taught me to climb and it's not like he was just giving. This man's not giving anything. He can't climb without somebody. So he needed me as much as I needed him. I was belaying him and keeping him alive while he was doing challenging stuff. In exchange, he would give me some information and teach me. As one does, as one does without expecting anything from them when that seems like the agreement in the beginning. And you know, I mean, I'm pretty entertaining company, I think. But then one day in the parking lot after a, a bluegrass band, this is in Washington state, by the way, on the Olympic Peninsula, when I first year as a raft guide. And I just went out to my car and he follows me out to my car and I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> and by the way, I didn't drink at all okay so none of this is ever i mean i'm always I, I i stopped drinking more or less in my 20s early 20s not more or less like i haven't had I'm, i i think i haven't drank in like almost 20 years now anyway actually more than 20 years wow anyway whatever i'm not an alcoholic i just don't drink anymore he goes out to the van and he's talking and i'm like bye and he's like and then he just kisses me and i'm like oh so i kiss him back because i'm like don't want to be <laughs> i had so much healing to do y'all but I didn't want to be rude. So I kiss him back. And then we like keep kissing. And then the next thing I know, I'm dating this man. And the thing is, is I just remember thinking like, whoa, when did this happen? Why is this happening? This guy's 
like kind of gross. I don't want to date this man. But you know what convinced me to date him? Well, first of all, I was a survivor of childhood essay. So it never, like my body, I've never actually seen as my own anyway. It's theirs for the taking, more or less. Unfortunately, that's my mindset. I didn't realize that for a long time. And so in my mind, him kissing me was my fault. Maybe I must be a cock tease. I must have asked for it. I must have led him on somehow because he would never just do this without me signaling that I want this. Even though I had never signaled that because I don't want this. Anyway, I dated him all summer. Luckily, it was just the summer because I had to go back and finish my last year of college in Montana. But the thing that pisses me off is there's this really hot dude my age at the climbing wall who really wanted to date me and was like so cool and I kept blowing him off and I didn't want to tell him well I'm forking this like old man you know this guy would be like you're so cute the old man would be like you're so cute you're so cute any men who say you're so cute and they're like older these men are like pounds yeah. honestly I kind of I don't know I thought that I'd asked for this and I thought that I owed it to him because he was teaching me so much and did this huge favor of spending time with a 21 year old or 22 year old. Like I didn't even realize like that this man was getting so much out of this. I was like, God, I'm just such a burden. I mean, I got, I'm lucky that he wants to teach me to climb. So I just kind of gave into it. You know, I did, he, I went on like one of my first backpacking trips, you know, and look at this, this is beautiful, right? I just, like so many women, I just wanted to like get into the outdoors. I just needed a mentor. I wanted to learn how to, I wanted to climb. I wanted to backpack. I wanted to do all these things and I just wanted to learn. But the only way a lot of women can get into these spaces is by other women because when men bring us in, they always want to fork us or they want something in return. And when I was, uh, you know, in, in New York as a storyteller and you started off as a storyteller and improviser, and this is before I, you know, actually got started to get published and, you know, was followed more of like the journalism path and started writing a ton for publications. I kept trying to write a book, you know, because I had, uh, I had won the moth. I had won all these storytelling competitions. So I was just trying to write a book and this man, this old man comes out of nowhere and it's like, well, I can help you. Ah, you know, I'll just charge you this. This man ruined my book. Literally was trying to date me and I didn't even realize it. God, I was so ignorant, y'all. And he was another one of these guys who like plays the like, I'm a loser. Like, you know, I know what I'm talking about. But like, he's like that victim. Anyway, God. Um, I paid this man to help me write this book proposal. And he took out all the chapters where I'd been stalked and like preyed on anything that involved like men, you know, terrorizing me. He was like, no, cut that. You know, most women can't relate to that. And I'm like, pretty sure that's not true. <laughs> yeah, I was so, I was so naive y'all. I was a big, strong rock climber. But when it came to older men and their dumb, dumb opinions that are never right, I was like, yeah, he must be right because he's an older man and confident in what he says. So I took all those chapters out I named the book what he wanted me to name it, turned it into my um, literary agent. And it, it took me like a year almost, or I don't know, nine months or something to write this thing. I gave this man $10,000 to help me with this book proposal. And I didn't have $10,000. I, I was making like 20,000 a year. I put it all on credit cards and then it didn't sell. It didn't sell because there was no hearts because this guy had taken all of it out because he was trying to help a woman write a memoir about being a woman through his own misogynistic, like, bleh. Anyway, I have been screwed over by so many men who are mentors and teachers. All the time that they're trying to teach us, it's usually really condescending anyway. They would never treat men the way they treat us. And so if you have like daddy issues or easily like for whatever reason, you know, find yourself turning into like a little girl around older men or just men in general but especially older men do not let any of these men teach you anything nothing they are there to exploit you coerce you date you they're gross they're liars stay away